Now what's happened is some of our governors, we know these contractors contribute to them. Ain't no question about it. You and I know we've been running for office long enough. I know that the, the fellow that buys the Caterpillar tractor, he buys it on time, but he goes around and helps a little bit, and I understand that helping business myself. But I said, now let's wait until this fiscal year's out, and we're discharging a bunch of men. We're bringing them back, and it loosens up. Summertime, we've got all these rights, and then we'll release some of this money, but we'll keep faith of the Congress. So they went home, and they're all right. Now they've started it up, and Fallon was going to have a hearing, and we got him to call it off. But then Kramer starts raising hell. Now, Jennings Randolph don't stand too well in the pinch anyway. As you know, he kind of gives a little. So he's done called himself a hearing the 29th. Now, I think what you can say to Kramer is, the president's asked me and Dirksen about withholding another $400 million. He can withhold it, and you can't do a damn thing about it. You can pass a resolution through this house telling him not to, and he'll veto the living hell out of it. And we're a hell of a poor people to be talking about withholding expenditures, and then when he withholds some, we make him cancel them. Now, I'll get him not to take this other action, and I'll get it released for you as soon as the year's over uh, at a reasonable time, maybe August, September, somewhere along there, where we can use it. But let's don't get this thing in partisan politics. If you Let me ask you. I understand. Yep. You, you earmarked or set aside $400 million. Right, that's right. We and withheld that. That's the range. Right. And uh, you have right. contemplated or discussed the possibility of another form. Right. That's right. And I've told them and announced publicly that we're considering it, but we have not done it. So that there... That's what really stirred up the opposition when they heard the second withholding. Now, do I understand that uh, even though you've discussed it and so forth, you are going to let that go out or I, uh, I, I would I would just forget it and cancel it and and let it go on out if I did, if I could buy them off and, <laughs> uh, and, but you would stand firm on the 400 that's, that we all discussed that's right until uh, till we decided that we could release it and I'll be glad to talk to you about it uh, whenever you're you get to hurt whenever we need some jobs whenever we need to release it I'm not uh, all I want to do is for the economy, period. Well, let me talk to Bill Kramer. That's uh, right, and talk to Ev Dirksen, and uh, let's get this hearing over in the Senate stopped. And what I will do, I'll take no action on impounding the other 400. If they challenge me and want them running the ground, I can damn easily do it, and I don't believe you can whip me between now and <laughs> June 30th. I don't want to, but uh, I just want to help the economy. And I honestly think, I honestly think that... Uh, uh, that uh, we ought to hold it a little while longer, but we ought to release some of the housing. Then road ought to come right after it. I think you kind of ought to do it by priorities. I think the soldiers are entitled to theirs, and I released 600 million because we've held it 18 months. Now I'm, I'm going to release some of the housing sometime in the spring. Then I'm willing to go along with the road. Can I talk to you about another matter? Yes, sir, anything you want to, any time. Matter of fact, I resent a little bit. You don't call me up. Uh, well, uh, you beat Charlie Halleck, he used to call me. Dirksen calls me every week about something. I think we ought to get along better. I'm not, I don't mind you having all the men. If I expect if I got in a real emergency, I'd get more votes in your place than i do some other places anyway. So <laughs> go ahead, what you got on your mind? You got a lot in 64. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, in your, if the country was involved and the, flag was going down, I imagine I could holler fire on the Republican <laughs> side and get more help than I could sometimes out of Rosenthal and no some of my own boys. Go ahead now. What do you got All on the right? right? Uh, we've got this debt limitation up yes, tomorrow. Yes, sir. Uh, I think our people, Mr. President, uh, in the Committee on Ways and Means tried to be responsible. And I want you to know that the action they suggested on of PCs and the debt limitation did not mean, and uh, John Burns has said it, would say it, that he did not mean that if this was done, you had to reorganize the budget and show your figures differently. Uh, it was simply his feeling, and I think personally it's sound, that these are obligations of the federal government, and as such, they ought to be included in the ceiling. But that in my opinion, is the least um, uh, desirable and necessary of the two that uh, they proposed. The other one was the lifting of the four and a quarter ceiling on uh, full faith and credit obligations of the federal treasury. 
long as I've been here, whether the Secretary of the Treasury has been Democrat or Republican, they have urged this arbitrary uh, ceiling be lifted. In fact, one of your best friends, well, know, Bob Anderson, uh, yeah, I know that. he yeah. came up and made the most forceful presentation, yeah. urging that the limitation be lifted because it would save money, it would permit the Treasury Department to uh, more easily, uh, more economically, more efficiently, more effectively handle their terrible debt problems down there. Now, I don't like to see this issue, because I think it's darned important, Mr. President, that you get an increase in the debt limitation. I hate to see it get involved in uh, the partisan problems that they ought to, ought to, and it ought to be on this bill. What we, I think the Secretary of Treasury would be happy to see you do this, and our side, I think, would be happy to support you if we didn't drive off a bunch of votes on the debt limit bill. Now, what you ought to do, I've looked over this whole thing, Jerry. You all ought to play uh, recommittal and partisan on this debt limit bill. This is one we need, and we need in a hurry. We're fighting with the world. We've got all the finance ministers over there. We've got them to cut down their interest. We're fighting their balance of payments. We had a hell of a month this month, a damn good one. We're doing reasonably well. Federal Reserve's cooperating pretty good, and we're moving along fine. We, this ought to be a quickie. You ought to run this through and let us finance our obligations. Do all your fighting on other things. Now, I think that Secretary of Treasury be glad to meet you, endorse a goddamn bill to give him this leeway and fight for it, and I'd get on. I, I'd go down uh, and try to help him on uh, uh, first on the PCs. Let's get back to it. I'm willing to appoint a commission put Bob Anderson on it, uh, let him uh, give us his ideas, put some of the other Republicans on it, put the Comptroller General on it, and s agree on a, on a budget that all of us will agree to, every one of us. Now, when Eisenhower sold assets, it's all right. When we sell them, it's all wrong. I think we ought to agree how our budget's going to be, and whatever presidents follow us, we can do it. If they want NIA administrative cash, I don't care. I'll teach it any way they want to treat it. But I think that it's important that if you're going to have all these loan programs that y'all won't face up to, you just plain won't do it, and you know as well as I do. College housing, I tried last year, and you won't do it. You won't swallow that castor oil. REA, you won't do it. I tried it last year. You're lending this money out 3%, and it's costing us 5%. I think that I've got to have enough money, if we're going to lend $10 billion, that you force me to lend. I can't raise it from taxpayers. I just can't go out and raise that much more. It's, first, it's not an operating expense. It's a loan. When I make a loan in my bank, I don't consider it operating expense like the salary of my president. And uh, everybody will agree with it. Your stands will agree with it. Your Bob Anderson will agree with it. A loan is not an operating expense. Now, if we all are going to make us increase these loans, as you did with Export-Import, Farmers Home, REA, I went against all of them. I asked you last year to give me an REA bank. I asked them to quit the college housing at 3%. That's, we know we, they, no use of making these college loans. 3%, you get 5 is easy. They ought to pay what, it, what the market costs. But I'm going to appoint a bipartisan commission. I'll talk to you about the commission if you want to. I'll talk to Dirksen about it. I want to have men that have no nothing to do except draw the line. I plan to put Bob Anderson on it because I think I'd put George Humphrey on it if they want to. i put the ex-secretaries of the Treasury on it. Uh, I put uh, Douglas Dillon on it and let them come in and tell us here's the way the budget ought to be. My own judgment is it ought to be an NIA budget. I think what we raise on Social Security is just as much a government revenue as what we raise from an estate tax. And I think you ought to have that $175 billion that we raise in there. And then the way we pay it out, I think that ought to be uh, charged against it. Every expenditure we got, including Medicare, all this kind of stuff, except the loans. I think the loans ought to be. So that's the NIA budget. Now, that's what I believe in. But if this commission tells me we want to go on with this present budget, uh, that's okay by me. But we'll have a nonpartisan budget. We'll have it this year. We'll have the study this year, and we'll come back to you this year. So much for the budget part of it now and the participation. Now, when you get on the bonds, if you put this motion on here, you kill my debt limit. Now, you don't want to do that. If your wife gets sick and you want to bring the doctor in to help her, well, you don't want to kill your kids, and that's what happens on this one. When you do this, you take on all the goers, the Patmans, all the group that's against what you want and what Fowler wants. You and Fowler are closer together than they are. 
but you just murder it and they can't take it. And this is not a question of me or you. This is a question of, of the world picture. Bobby Kennedy came in here yesterday, says Germany's against you, France is against you, England's against you, Italy's against you. None of it doing as good as John F. Kennedy did. Well, now, that's just because we're doing this fighting here. You cut me on one side, and Bobby's cut me on the other, and you're selling your country short abroad, and I'm not running for a damn thing, don't want anything. I'll accept, Bobby. I'll accept you as president tomorrow. If you give me any quick claim deed that you'll be president, I'll do it. I want to go back to my ranch and just enjoy life, and I'm working my best, and I'm not trying to be partisan. But we got to have this debt limit, and we got to have it this month. We ought to have it before you go on your holiday. I uh, we're too that. damn close. First, you made a mistake last year cutting it $2 billion, but you did. And uh, now then, we need it. Now, when you put either one of these damn motions on it, you force me to try my damnedest to beat you, if I can, and I can, I think. But uh, anyway, you force me to do it, and it ought, that ought to be the issue. But if it's going to be the issue, it ought to be on the second one, not on this quickie. That, that's up against the deadline because you just can't grind it out that fast. Now, the way to solve both of them is, uh, first place, uh, John Burns won't admit this, but you folks started the sale of assets. You did it under Eisenhower. John Burns wrote in his minority report, and I read it last year when I sent up the certification bill, that this is what we ought to do. We ought to sell these damn things. And uh, when I did it, then he got up there, and you thought, well, it helps him, gives him a budget advantage. Well, I don't think if anybody's elected or diselected on the budget, but anyway, uh, that's that. And if you're going to do it, do it on the second one. And your participation, though, is uh, uh, I'm just going to sell enough to meet the loan demands that you force upon me. Now, how do you force them upon me? Export-import, REAs, Farmers Home. Wilbur Mills is raising hell, Fulbright's raising hell right now about Farmers Home loans. They can't get them. The banks don't make the loans, so the government's got to make them. They're good loans, but we don't have the money. So I have to go out and get the money. And the only way I can get the money is to make them pay their loan or to sell the certificate that I've got. And the certificates are the best way to handle the money because if you just sell an individual, nobody will buy a 3% housing loan. Nobody will buy a 2% REA loan. They well, but the thing that we're talking about here is that we are going to deprive you or the administration of the right to sell them. No, oh, that's right. But we simply say that if they are sold, they ought, and since they are an obligation of the uh, federal government, and this so has been so ruled by the attorney general, so that you could sell them to the trust fund, then they ought to be included. And so the are 98 billion others, Jerry. You've got tell them a lot of others the same way. That logic applies to a good many others. And what you do there is, what you do there now, you you you, you know, I, I'm a good country girl. I can feel it when you do it to me. I've been doing it to you all all these years, and I know it. What you do is you run my deficit up past Eisenhower. Now, we ain't going to let you do that. Well, we uh, we, uh, he's, my, uh, he's my model, and I'm always going to, he's my best friend. I'm going to stay under his, and old Johnny, he's got that little, he's been messing around out there, you know, in Wisconsin, and he understands how to do these things. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't mind. In, I don't mind finding that out on the second one. I will just find it out. But don't do it on this one. I got to have quickie, and it's you that's got to have it. If we don't pay those veterans' pensions and Social Security, instead of my bragging on the 90th Congress, I'm going to have to run it down. <laughs> and uh, it's still a Democratic <laughs> Yeah, well, if I got it's not. To, if you think I'm going to let you get by these 187 to nothing votes and not blame you, you crazy as hell. I, I've just been, I've just uh, been being real nice, never saying a word, got a rule, and uh, yep. I'm taking all these things on, making a list of them, so my conscience won't hurt me when I slap back at you. Okay. But uh, you delivered them unanimous the other day up there, and I felt so sorry for those poor negros the way you treated yep. poor. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do it on the, do it on the real one. Don't do it on the one we got to have in a hurry. That's why we're serious. I'll, I'll have power and. Uh, and the, uh, whoever the tax expert is over there, I guess it's standing on bonds, the money man. I'll have them sit down with you and Johnny Byrne and whoever you want to on the Republican side and work out your bond deal and have them recommend it as a separate measure. I don't want to kill the deadline. Or the PCs, if you want, I'll have the bipartisan commission work out how that is, and I'll follow it, I'll, I'll, even in advance. I'll take Bob Anderson, I'll take George Humphrey, and I'll take... Uh, 
whoever the Secretary of Treasury was under Truman, Douglas Dillon, and uh, uh, Joe Fowler, and I'll take the, uh, the Controller General, and we'll put the, he's old man Richard's son-in-law, so he's not a bad fellow, and we'll have them say what a budget ought to be. And I don't think this man's a partisan. Shields, I just jerked him out of the Shields, I just jerked him out of the University of Maryland because Kermit Gordon had to quit. Go to Smithsonian, I can go to uh, Brookings. Uh, and and we'll follow what they say. Uh, I haven't been following Laird, uh, very frankly. He's your monetary expert, giving me unsure hell. And if you want to know why I haven't been following him, I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. I, I just, I believe I'm, I've been a part of the establishment all my life. And, and I talk to you and Dirksen. You're the only two men I talk to.